All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Traders Mindset, episode two. And today we're going to be talking about time frame confluence. First of all, before I start getting into the topic, I want to thank you guys for 300 subscribers. It's the fourth day into the new year, and I already got. I just thank you guys for 200 last week. Today I'm thanking you for 300. Thank you so much. Keep subbing. First thing you do, sub, and then turn the post notifications on so you can catch these moves with me too. But today we're going to be talking about time frame confluence and why it fits under the trader's mindset, right? Time frame confluence is just basically something in trading that someone must master right to articulate their bias in trading but you know it's more so of a it's a skill right but i do believe that a trader must be able to you know understand time frames right and, and how can it affect someone because me personally i remember in my forest journey one of the hardest things to master was learning when and when when and what to look at at what certain time the lower time frames the one hour the four hour the daily the weekly i never knew what to look at i never knew what to place my trade based off of and it was one of the most difficult things that i remember overcoming in forex you know it was probably one of the hardest things you know that i can name so i'm gonna be talking about a lot more on the charts so i will be meeting you guys on there so tonight we're gonna be breaking down gj i see a beautiful set it up tonight and hopefully we can take our first trade of the ftmo count there's an update on the ftmo count i haven't taken anything yet two days into this week there hasn't been anything beautiful but tonight i see a beautiful setup i can't wait to break you guys break it down for you guys while we talk about time frame and why why does it matter so much to a trader so i'll see you guys on the charts all right so now that we're on the charts i'm gonna be continuing to talk about time for confluence and why i kind of put it under the trader's mindset category the series because you know before I start analyzing the chart, time frame confluence can mess with someone's emotions, right? To the point where you have to be able to control being able to analyze time frames, right? Being able to master when to look at what. And coming up in Forex, it was one of the hardest things for me to do was to um, actually looking at, you know, the daily, the weekly, and when to know, right? And, you know, why I talk about that and some pointers when breaking out GJ, I do think I have a beautiful setup and I'm, I'm going to take some markings, mark them up and show you guys exactly, you know, why I feel like we could go long from here. Right. As you see on the weekly, we are approaching a major key area of support and resistance right here. Right. So. Earlier in the week, if you see earlier in the video, we were breaking under. We had candles over here on the lower time frames, but I did mention that we do come down here to retest this, to retest this major area of support and resistance, right? We come over here and we test it one time. We test it two times. We test it one time from the opposite side. We test it over here. This is a testing candle. Bearish candle closes under. Bullish candle closes right back above, showing you that it's tested that area of support and resistance. And we have over also another area of where it touched and reversed over here, and one creating right now. The weekly time frame has rejected this area so far, and flipping bullish, you know, in, like with so much bullish pressure, right? We have a huge rate to the downside, and you know, based on the weekly time frame. I do believe that we could go bullish, although it is important to note that we are still hovering under this 50 EMA, right? Signaling that we could be signaling that we could be in potential downtrend, but it will depend on how we come, how we close and what candles we close on the lower time frames. So stopping at the weekly time frame, we're going to go to the daily time frame, but I also want to talk about emotions and conflictions, right? This is actually going to be the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to time frame confluence and how to kind of, you know, master the emotions that come with it, because there are going to be conflictions, right? There are always going to be conflictions. Sometimes you might have a perfect trade where you have the best time frame confluence in terms of having bullish structure on the weekly, bullish structure on the daily, on the four hour, and then from there you go on and take your entries in lower time frame. Those are the best trades, right? For me, those are the trades where price is clear. You know, sometimes the more difficult part is going to be your entry but sometimes almost kind of like now you're going to get conflictions right where each time frame is kind of conflicting one another and you got to be able to tell and make sense of what's going right? so when i mean conflictions i mean something like th this right when you look at the daily time frame right you can see clear as day that we have a lower low to a lower high to a lower low right so the only you know for me when you're following market structure you don't want price to retest the previous pivot point which would be right here right and then continue the downtrend right lower high and then you're gonna we're gonna want to drop to make a low, lower low right and then what's gonna happen lower high lower low lower high lower low and just continue this trend that's what you're expecting to happen right but you're gonna have things like other time frames that are gonna be you know 
opposite of that bias. So in the daily time frame, I had, you know, a lower low to a lower high. I'm in a clear downtrend. We're breaking this huge range, which I'm going to mark right now. We're breaking this huge range over here to create new lows. But let's look at the weekly time frame. To me, the weekly time frame is showing clear rejection over here. Let's get rid of this line, see we're clear. We're showing clear rejection over here. The same kind of rejection that we see over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. Trend, right? So you're gonna have to be able to know when and where to look at you know, the time frames at because they're gonna be conflicting. And for me, my answer to you is the one that makes sense. One is the one that makes sense. And two, higher time frames will always prevail, right? Higher time frames have more data. Higher time frames are telling you more. Sometimes it's gonna be hard. But to me, for example, what I have here is the weekly rejecting the supply and demand area. And you kind of want to look at what happened in the previous time, right? We, when we come here and retest this area, we drop. Oh, and then what happens when we come at it from the other side? When we come at it from the other side, we get one exact reaction. Bullish. Come over here. Bullish. You're going to have to deal with conflicting time frames telling you different things, right? Because sometimes when I go to the four hour, I might have a break of structure and have a higher high, right? This might happen right here. Boom, 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 right? But that doesn't change anything because the daily time frame would still be at a lower high, right? We would need to break this point to break structure and then could declare a, bull a bullish trend. But the weekly is telling you something different. For me, the, what makes sense to me is the higher time frame, and that's the weekly time frame rejecting a key supply and demand area. So these next two points are going to make a little bit quicker. One being that the patience, the third one, um, I've already talked about it in a whole separate video, but I kind of want to relate it to time frames in general and predicting future positions based on history is a second point I want to make. The reason why is because this is more so away from the psychology part. This is more so, you know, the actual skill of trading, right? And this is, you know, getting in that mindset where, you know, you could use you know, past history, determine future positions in trading, where you're going to go. For example, I just got done telling you guys that, you know, I've seen in history, right, back in 2021, October um, 11th and 18th, um, and January 2022, and May of 2022, every single time that we have touched this area in history, this is a huge reversal area, right, huge rejection area. So I'm um, I'm seeing what happens every single time, right? Not only to know the direction, but how many pips we can potentially make off that move. For example, on this move right here, we have a 500, 800 pip drop from the supply and demand zone. From this move, we have a 500 pip move to supply and demand area. The third time we take this trade, you have a six almost 700 pip drop, right? So not only in this scenario not only in this scenario and this scenario can you predict where you're going to go based on supply and demand area you can predict the pips right so you know if you take this trade at this certain time you can predict that price is going to drop another 500 pips right because that's what happened right over here right so price went your way for 300 pips re, uh, retested again and then dropped or you could have taken a third entry and the third time it retested you could have took the median of pips that usually drops every single time it reaches this area and take tp at 500 pips right so again it's not only the direction but you can also probably see you know where you're gonna head if that area touches again for example over here once price came down here right price flew price flew a thousand pips now that price comes down retest and closes above where do i think i could possibly go the same place we went last time right we're gonna target a thousand pips and it actually went for let's get rid of this it actually went for almost 1500 pips Right, so you would have been able to also predict the amount of pips that you're going to go in the direction that you're predicting you're going to go. And lastly, we're going to talk about patience. So, for me, every every trader is different. Maybe even this can relate to scalpers. You know, if you're, you're trading on the 15 minute, be mindful of this, and it's going to be quick. Be mindful that you have to have patience according to the time frames. I have found that if I'm taking a daily setup, if I'm taking a four hour setup, weekly setup, I got to expect to. Um, have longer positions based on the time frames. So when it comes to patience in trading, right, it, it's more than just, you know, yes, be patient, waiting for your entry, waiting for the best setup. But, you know, you got to be able to learn 
and know that according to the time frame you're trading on, you got to have patience in terms of when you should take TP and how long a setup should take according to that a time frame, right? So you want to have patience. So if I'm taking a four hour setup just like this one that I went back in time, uh, June 22nd, or I mean, June 2002, you can see that I am, if I'm taking a long over here, price created a higher high, pulled back, right? I'm on the four hour. It's gonna take a couple four hour candles to maybe set up and, and take profit, right? So price comes down here, rejects two times, right? And that alone, it's already been two days. And then for price to actually go along and take profit, you see that it takes one day and eight hours to take profit, multiple four hours formed, and I'm trading on a four hour setup. So that's normal. You got to have patience in your setup and your trade taking profit according to the time frame. Now for a scalper, maybe who trades on the 15, five minute, you know, you're trading on the 15, five minutes. So a trade can be a lot quicker. So if you see down here, we have a huge break. You have a huge break under, right? This is the 15 minute. You pull back. You create a double top, right? And then you have a change in structure. Double top, lower low, lower high, right? You have a change in structure right over here. I'm gonna change the color. Oops. I'm gonna change the color. Let me pull it away for you so you can see it, right? So, Right, this is exactly the formation that you're seeing. Break under, come up, retest, and we're gonna continue to go short. So if you see, if you see this, right, and let's set take profit right here where price has reject multiple times right here. Is that fair? Right over here, 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 here. This is the lower time frame now. This is like I'm setting up a lower time frame trade. So as price breaks out of this double top, breaks under, retest, right? Look how long it takes to take a trade on the 15 minute, right? Price starts to enter, retest and engulf over here. And look, one hour and 15 minutes for 77 pips. Right, that would be my trade. That would be my entry on a 15 minute setup on a breaker structure. We broke under, we broke under, came up and retested, had this formation, had this change in structure, and then we dropped 77 pips in one hour and 30 minutes. Look at this two hours and 30 minutes, six hours to, to it dropped all the way down here. So, again, um, before I wrap this up, you know, you have to have patience according to the time frame. I think that's actually very important. Um, that was a perfect setup, a break and retest right under break, retest, and I just showed you how, you know, how fast you can take profit on different time frames. So, you know, Trader's Mindset Episode 2, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was a lot probably. Um, I'm going to try to cut it down as long as I can and add the most important parts to it, but I, you know, it's going to be hard. I feel like everything's important. So, the three things, emotions, conflictions. That's one, <laughs> patience, and when to look at each time frame. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys stay tuned, and I hope you guys catch this next move with me tonight. Oh, I'm not even done. I'm not even done. By the way, I'm going to show you guys exactly where we're going to go. So as for tonight, again, very quick breakdown. On the weekly time frame, I do have price rejecting this big supply and demand area over here at um, 157.968. Um, every time we come down here, we reject the other way. That's what I expect to happen. This is kind of more of a weekly setup because it's based on the weekly time frame. Uh, when you go to the daily, we are in a downtrend, so we're going to be careful. What's really going to matter on this trade is the break of structure, right? When you look at structure, you have a lower low, pull back to a lower high, created a new lower low, right? For us to break structure and go the other way, way and declare a bullish trend we're gonna have to break that area and then retest it right that's what we're gonna need so as as long as you know structure maintains over here as long as we come up break structure um we're not gonna go long right so we have to be real patient again it's the it's based on the weekly time frame so that could take a while we might have moves in between but it's not our moves it's not my move so what i'm gonna be looking for is a break of structure the correction that we uh predicted last week happens now right very aggressively it came up just as aggressive as it came down we had a straight drop i was waiting for any pullback and this is you know and we got it this is exactly what happened and we got it aggressively so Again, we could respect the daily time frame and we could end up just, you know, continuing this downtrend, this lower low to lower high. But on the daily time frame, I haven't seen a wick being formed, meaning we could go and create a wick, which means we would push bullish, right? Not even on not even that, but the weekly time frame to me is showing that bullish momentum may come and we might push all the way back up to 168.918 because that's where price goes every single time we fly up here actually nine one six seven point seven five nine so 
that's what I have on GJ. I hope you guys catch this move with me. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for, hopefully. I mean, so far, everything that we have predicted in the last video is happening. We're getting a nice correction. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take a lot from it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Deuces.